Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Rubin, here with another episode of Ad Hoc with the Doc. I'm here at a very exciting place. It's Vincere Cancer Center in Scottsdale, Arizona, where there's some things happening here that are very unique. And as you know, Ad Hoc with the Doc is brought to you to show you unique, exciting things in medicine. And we're here talking to the founders of Vincere Cancer Center, Drs. Pablo Pritchard and Dr. Vershali Shukla. Doctors, first of all, thank you very much for being on the show and for having us here. Your center is amazing. I'm so excited to have you tell our audience about what you're doing here because from what you've told me, this is not only unique to Scottsdale, Arizona, and not only unique to the United States as a whole, but there's some unique things happening here globally as well. Yes, thank you, Dan. You're um, welcome. Yeah, we, we, uh, we've been uh, formulating this center for the last two years trying to wow. think everything out and well, it's actually been longer for me I even want. longer for her she More brought me in two years ago okay yeah so i wanted to do my own cancer center since i started training in 2006 mm -hmm. and so um i came out here and i've been in with two different practices and then finally i met dr pritchard at tumor board where else and we decided to do the center together and dr shukla you are board certified radiation oncologist yes, I'm a radiation board yes. certified radiation Excellent. And so part of part of Vincere is radiation oncology. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that because there's some amazing stuff happening here. Dr. Pritchard, you are a surgeon. Yes. What type of surgeries do you perform? Uh, reconstructive surgeon. Okay. So uh, we met, as, as uh, Dr. Shugla said, uh, at a tumor board discussing breast cancer. Got it. And uh, from my perspective, you know, I do uh, breast cancer reconstruction. Got it. Um, but incorporating all of those uh, reconstructive techniques into the center as well. So collaboration is what people are calling for. A lot of patients, you know, with time being so short these days, having to go from one doctor to the next doctor, not a lot of inter-clinic communication. Sounds like Vincere is solving that problem for people. What types of disciplines do you have here? Right, so um, Vincere is trying to mimic a, a multidisciplinary clinic. So we okay. have radiation oncology, we medical oncology, so Mayo Clinic is coming to support us, as well as we're using different medical oncologists in the community. Wonderful. We have surgeons, so reconstructive surgeons, breast surgeons, we have the neurosurgeons from Vero. We have urologists, Dr. Larry Bands just started working with us this week. Excellent. Um, and we hope to continue to grow. This is wonderful. Tell us a little bit about the surgical portion of Vincere. Sure. So. Um, again, the idea behind Vincere is to be your one-stop shop. Okay. Uh, you come here uh, previous for just for uh, taking an example of breast reconstruction okay. or breast cancer. So this is like somebody who's already had surgery for breast cancer. No, to, okay. to say example, uh, somebody who had a diagnosis of breast cancer. Okay. And so first they would normally see their breast cancer surgeon. Okay. And then maybe be referred out to see their medical oncologist going to another building mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going then re being referred to see their plastic surgeon okay. being referred to see their radiation oncologist okay. and so they're, they're doing all these appointments and their um, naturopathic oncologist and their naturopathic yes, oncologist yes, okay. of course yes, yes absolutely <laughs> and and they're going to all these appointments and they don't you know it's hard to know if these, these all these doctors are really talking right right uh, absolutely oftentimes they're not yes. and oftentimes a lot of interactions that happen you don't know you don't know we're not all on the same electronic health system Yes. And patients may come in and say, well, I thought, doctor, I thought you got those records. Right. When you didn't. Yes. Or, why did you do that surgical technique? This was going to affect my radiation this way. You know, you get that from mm. her, of course. Right. Or, <laughs> yeah. you know, same thing with a medical, medical oncologist. Mm. You know, why did you do this? This is going to affect the outcome in this way. Exactly. So, and it's hard for doctors to talk because there's just not enough time in the day. There's a right. lot of patients, et cetera. Right. And this is solving a problem. Exactly. So mm. if they're all here... Yeah. Um, Patient comes in, sees their breast cancer surgeon, mm -hmm. uh, sees their radiation oncologist, sees their medical oncologist, sees their um, integrative, integrative doctor or naturopath. Exactly, and sees this their, is an integrative center too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I'd like to talk about that a little. And, bit. and sees their reconstructive surgeon mm -hmm. all in the same area, and mm -hmm. sees we actually have a tumor board mm -hmm. that we'll talk about. Um, sees all these interactions happening while they're there. And can actually ask questions to all these medical specialists. Will the patient, you, will all doctors be utilizing the same electronic health record at this at the center here? Uh, sort of. Okay. Um, all the doctors who are non-radiation oncologists. Okay. Yes. Um, radiation oncology, as 
We keep our records kind of safe because it. it's also record and verify for radiation treatments. So Specific to your discipline. Dis yes. And I that's don't. a very unique type of medical record. Um, uh, very because they're, they're using that for planning for the radiation yeah. machines, which most doctors Very high level need. stuff. Yes. Dr. Shukla uh, and Dr. Pritchard, you were talking about a multidisciplinary tumor board that you would be having in the conference room in your center. Why? What's the importance of a tumor board, both to the physicians and to the patient? Well, tumor boards are the backbone of cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. So because cancer is so complicated, and mm -hmm. there's usually a medical oncologist, a surgical oncologist, mm -hmm. um, different multi-specialties mm -hmm. like physiotherapy, naturopathic oncologist, mm -hmm. reconstructive surgery, so many people are involved. It's so important that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. And because what I do impacts what happens to him, what happens to the medical oncologist. So we all have to work together and together as a team to mm -hmm. come up with a, a treatment plan. And there's so much coordination of care because once the chemo starts, you know, mm -hmm. the chemo starts, I have to know when the chemo starts, when mm -hmm. it ends, so I can start my radiation at the same time. Okay. And there's, there, there's tumor specific. So for breast cancer, we have certain people in, in the tumor board, and for my brain tumors, I have the neurosurgeons and the neuropathologists, and so we have a specific mm -hmm. room that we've dedicated to do those tumor boards here. So for those, I, uh, patients talk a lot about, oh, my case was brought to tumor board. Right. A tumor board is where the specialists, the doctors, sit and discuss that person's case individually and come up with a comprehensive plan of action. And then, like you said, all doctors are on the same page. Yes, That's and ours is, is a bit unique, too, because mm -hmm. we bring the patient to the tumor board Interesting. versus just talking about a patient in a closed-door setting versus wow. having the patient there so that they see that interaction. Truly participate. Yeah, right. and, and, and there's so many different decisions mm -hmm. to be made at each mm -hmm. level. Every, every specialist, there's different decisions to be made, and all those decisions have to coordinate, right? They have to mm -hmm. interact well. Not only are there different decisions, but there's different time frames for those decisions. And if that doesn't coordinate, their care is impacted. And so getting the patient involved in their care, that's part of conquering their cancer, right? And so they're involved, they're making in the decision process. Mm -hmm. uh, they're seeing the interaction with all the high-level physicians there and um, all come to a plan together. And, and that, I'm sure, inspires confidence in the care team on behalf of the patient. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it really seems, when you talk about it, it conceptualize that, Cancer is as complex in its development as it is in its treatment. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Shukla, so radiation oncology, high use of high-tech machines to deliver just the exact right amount of radiation therapy to the patient to treat the cancer or a benign lesion requiring it. There are some firsts happening here. Yes, there uh, It's is. incredibly exciting. Talk to us a little bit about what machines you have, um, I know when you and I had talked about what you brought in here, I was just absolutely excited about it. I'd love, I know that the audience will be too. Well, we're going to be the first private center in the world to get a new machine called ZAP. ZAP was founded by Dr. Adler, mm -hmm. and he is the same gentleman who developed the CyberKnife. Okay. This, I, that, I mean, a lot of our patients know that name, so this is the, his next invention is His Zap. next inve invention. The beauty of this machine is it doesn't require a vault. So most radiation equipment mm -hmm. right now, pa patients have to be treated in a very in a, in a vault with lots of thick lead and cement. This so is, wait, what's a vault? Say that again. So a vault is, it's, it's basically a thick, thick... So like a special room? It's a special room made of thick cement and lead to prevent the radiation to seep out. Because with traditional machines, when they radiate, there's some... Is there, there's some leakage. leakage. There's okay. leakage. And, and that's why generally the patient is in the room alone? Yes, with okay. the camera, and we're okay. watching them. Okay. The, this new machine, mm -hmm. we're actually going to have, have it housed in glass. In glass? Exactly. Is that a first two? That's a first two. And not only that, the radiation therapists are in the room with the patient. So the patient's not alone. The patient's not alone. Which is important, especially mentally, emotionally, as you're going through this journey. I don't think anybody really wants to feel alone, and sometimes I think patients do feel isolated do feel in terms of their diagnosis. I mean, it's beautiful. And especially because we're getting a lot younger patients, mm -hmm. as well as older patients who really just, being alone is hard for them. Excellent. So that's a first. That's a first. 
uh, the first private center to have his app, first private center to have his app, and a radiation unit in glass. Yeah. So you can, okay. What else? So there's more stuff happening. There's more right stuff. Now. Intraoperative spine radiation. What does that mean? So, Intraoperative spine radiation. So you're giving radiation during a surgery? Yeah, so mm. sometimes the cancer can spread to the spine. Okay. Breast and prostate cancer are two common sites that spread to the spine. Okay. Normally we treat with a regular type of radiation, mm -hmm. but then what happens is the spinal cord gets a lot of radiation and there's only so much the spinal cord can take. Before it gets damaged. Before it gets damaged. Okay. So this is a way of the neurosurgeon inserting a spine or a big needle into the patient's spine mm -hmm. and we deliver the radiation that way. It's more precise and there's less toxicity to the normal spinal so cord. So the radiation is actually coming from a unit touching the lesion touches, instead of from a machine being shot at the lesion. Right, exactly. going through the skin and then hitting the spinal cord in the background. So it protects the spinal cord. It protects the and spinal cord. And precise. it's more precise. And the skin. And it's more precise. And there's, you are the first center in the world to offer that. Yes. And even in the private setting. Yes. That's what's so impressive, folks, is that this is a private setting. This is... This is, this is what you wanted for patients, and you're making it happen right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Congratulations. Thank you. It's wonderful. What else is happening? Tell us, I know it's an integrative, multidisciplinary center. Um, you've taken me through and showed me your facility. Um, integratively, what's happening here? Well, we're trying to change the concept of cancer because mm -hmm. a lot of times when you go to get treatment for cancer, you're going to a hospital mm -hmm. or a clinic that feels very sterile. Mm -hmm. And so we, you come to our clinic and we have a tea bar with our own set of teas that are therapeutic and hydrating for patients. Okay. But it's also a good ritual for patients to bond and share. And, and so you're not waiting in a, in a sterile room and waiting to go get your treatment. So that's a big change. And the other thing is, Something we're very excited about mm -hmm. is we get to work with Dr. Deepak Chopra, who, to me, Exciting. the leader of integrative medicine. Wow. And so we're going to offer his programs, mm -hmm. yoga and meditation, through his mm -hmm. certifications of instructors, as well as many research trials for patients. That's exciting. So not only patients can drink water, but they can drink botanical infusions that are made on site in a relaxed setting that can help them hydrate, can help them heal, can deliver certain nutrients to them. Yeah, but as well as de-stress, de uh, de-stress ingredients into mm -hmm. the, the teas, um, as well as energizing ingredients, depending on what the patient is going through. I imagine so some, they're very therapeutic teas, not just Yeah, they can teas. help healing from surgery. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, and then they could go upstairs and they could engage in yoga or meditation or other integrative therapies right here at the center. Yeah. Again, really doing it from an integrative perspective. Yeah, I mean, one, one, mm -hmm. one of the ways I like to think about it is think about this huge medical center mm -hmm. where you park in parking lot G mm -hmm. and go to building 22 for yeah. this, and then you have to you know, transfer over to building 11 for this. It's, it's all of that kind of shrunk down into a mm -hmm. boutique setting. So you come, it is very boutique. Yes, it's, wonderful. And, and it's kind of like the, the, the place where everybody knows your name, right? So mm -hmm. you come in, you have a very personalized, tailored uh, therapy it is so to all needed. these different aspects. And what a great place. I mean, Scottsdale is really you know, a place where people come. You're right by the Scottsdale Air Park as well, sure. so it's really convenient for people. Anything else you guys want to tell us about Vincer? It's a wonderful name. What, what does Vincer mean? And am I even saying it correctly? Well, sure. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you could say it that way. Yeah. I, the way I say it is Vincer, but... Well, you're um, the founder, so... <laughs> <laughs> but it means in Latin, to conquer. So the, the whole idea Wonderful. is a patient going through a tough time in their life, right? Mm -hmm. They get this cancer diagnosis. That's one of the worst news that patients usually yes. get, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, they get this diagnosis. They come to a place of healing, right, in mm -hmm. so many different ways, a healing from uh, healing of body, mind, and soul, right? And so uh, to conquer, what they're doing is they're conquering their cancer, conquering their fears, yes. conquering their stress, conquering all these issues that they're going through um, and then coming out healed. Well, thank you so much for having us here. It's been our privilege to be able to talk to you about your project and what you've done here and are going to be doing for people with cancer in the world. Really um, the greatest success and just thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us.